All rise. Give this woman to this man who had holy bonds of matrimony. Well, guys, here we are. I want to start off by saying how proud of you I am, you, Jules, you've grown up to be an amazing young man. I'm so very proud of you. But I don't want to start crying, so. <laughs> so. You guys have reached this, this stage of your relationship and here and getting ready to do the wedding vow, arguably the most important part of this ceremony. But the wedding vow is something that I don't think a lot of people really understand or, or pay a lot of attention to because it seems like something that you just repeat, and, and it's just done, and, and it's just part of a ceremony, and, and you go on with life. But you see, a wedding vow can be taken in two ways. The first way that you can take a wedding vow is you can take a wedding vow as a contract. And when you take a wedding vow as a contract, it, it brings a lot of things with it. One of, the, one of the things that it brings is, is a wedding vow taken as a contract falls under the law, right? And it brings with it something called an if-then statement. And a wedding vow taken as a contract with the if-then statement says that if he does this, then you'll do that. Or if she does that, then you'll do this. But that's not the way that God intended things to be. A wedding vow should never be taken as a contract. Because that falls under the law. A contract sets boundaries. A contract sets terms and conditions. And you never want a marriage and a wedding vow taken with terms and conditions. That's not how God intended. But the second way... That you can take a wedding vow, guys, is as a covenant. That's the way that God intended. Because a covenant is not based in the law. A covenant is between you and her. Two souls. Two living people. And you make a covenant. And when you make that covenant, that covenant is made under something different than the law. 
It's made under love, and it's made under grace. And that covenant, that's why you find in the wedding vow, until death do us part. Because a covenant is something that's made for generations. It's not something that's made for a period of time. It's for a lifetime. It's for an eternity. Covenants are made for long periods of time. They're not made for short terms. Covenants don't set boundaries. They don't do those things. So how do you know what boundaries to respect to one another? Well, it's simple. When you enter into your marriage vows under a covenant, love and grace take control of your relationship. And you love her so much that you would never do anything to hurt her. You love him so much that you would never want to do anything to hurt him. So there's no need to put boundaries and terms and conditions on your marriage. Let the love of each other establish what is good and right in your household. Let that be your guiding force. Let that create your boundaries within your marriage. Always love each other. Always see each other through the eyes of grace. Never lose that. My dad, I used to have a saying. My, my saying I used to like to say was, Lord willing in the creek don't rise. And my dad used to always look at me and say, oh, it'll rise. And that's true. Sometimes things happen. Life is not always a bed of roses. Sometimes there'll be hard times. Sometimes there'll be times you don't agree. But if you remember that the vow you gave was under a covenant and not a contract, and you remember the love and the grace that binds you two together, then no matter what happens, no matter what comes, you'll always be able to make it through together. Then there's a final part of the vow, and that's the bond. That's the bond. That's the thing that locks the two of you together. And that's nothing more than Almighty God. Because what He will join here today will be joined by Him and through Him. And if you remember that, it doesn't matter what this life will throw at you guys. Whatever happens in life, come back to the thing that locks you two together, which is the Holy Spirit. Come back to that thing that binds the two of you. You've found grace in her eyes. She's found grace in your eyes. And together, the Holy Spirit will bind the two of you. And the Bible tells us what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So no matter what happens in your life, remember your covenant, not your contract. You're bound together. And you're bound together by a force that is stronger than any that you could ever come across in this world. And that is under the Holy Spirit. And as long as you remember that and you come back to that, you can face any challenge together. And you will win. So what I say to you guys is what God will join today. Let no man put us under. God bless you. You, you all look handsome. You look handsome and you look beautiful. You got the gig. Very happy to be here and honored to be able to give the vows this afternoon. I want to say before I start, a man wrote one day, in my journey through life, I came across a wise man. And I asked him this question, what is more important, to love or to 
to be loved. The wise man smiled and said, which wing is the most important for you to fly? The left or the right? I think that speaks to all of us today. One of the greatest things that you can ever find in your marriage is the life of balance. And it takes two wings to accomplish that. So to love and to be loved brings quite a balance in a home. You both have come today to join your hearts together. You've opened your hearts one to another, and now it's time to, to let each other in. And as you walk through, our prophet once told us we live in a three-room house. And it doesn't matter how many more rooms that you have, basically you live in those three rooms. That is, we are made up of a body, spirit, and a soul. We want to type it to a house. It's a kitchen, a living room, and a bedroom. I want to tell both of you that one is just as important as the other. The kitchen is where one eats in order to sustain life. The living room is where you have fellowship in order to help each other through life. And the bedroom is where life is produced. In order to keep those things, always remember, as I said, one is just as important as the other. Keep this in mind, that when you walk into each other's open heart, into each other's home, don't forget to take your shoes off. Because there are places in our hearts that are very sacred. And that teaches us to always respect each other. Because if there's no respect in a marriage, then you do not have nothing. If you have no love, there is nothing to live for. But when you have respect one for another as husband and wife, it's because we realize, and you all have realized, that before you were husband and wife, you were brothers and sisters in Christ. So respect each other at all times one of the greatest things you would ever have in your marriage. So in these words, I ask both of you to stand as we enter into the vows. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready? All right. Are all the witnesses ready? All right. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is commanded by St. Paul to be honorable among all men. It is therefore not by any to be entered into unadvisably advisably or lightly, reverently, discreetfully, soberly, and in the fear of God. And into this holy state, these two persons present come to be joined. If there's anyone here that can show a just cause why they should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony, speak now or from hereafter forever, hold your peace. I will require and will charge you both as you'll surely answer at the day of judgment when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed that if there's either of you that know any impediment why you should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony, do you now confess it? Or it, be it assured unto you that any couples that are not joined otherwise than God's word doth allow their marriage is not lawful. But duly believing you have considered this solemn obligation you're about to assume, and that you have prepared to enter upon the same reverently, discreetfully, soberly, and in the fear of God, I shall propose to you the marriage covenant, and you will witness the same as you join your right hands together. Right hand. Thank you. 
Got it. <laughs> Julian Hill, will you have this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? To live together in this holy state of matrimony? Do you promise to love and honor and cherish and support in sickness or health, riches or poverty, and will forsake all others as long as you both shall live? I do. Wow, that was, he's sure, huh? Yeah. All right. Elizabeth Gallegos, will you have this man to be your lawful wedded husband? To live together in this holy state of matrimony? Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish, and support in sickness or health, riches or poverty, and cleave thee only unto him as long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> he sounds pretty sure. All right. I think we're doing okay. Then I will require a token. As we place these rings upon the immovable, perfect Word of God, I'm going to ask each one of you to take the ring that corresponds to your spouse. And will you rejoin your right hands? Go ahead. Go ahead. Put it on. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Almighty God, the great creator of all things, the author of everlasting life and the giver of all good gifts, when thou didst see fit to give man a present, you gave him a wife. It is written that he that has found a wife has found a good thing. And as we stand this afternoon, after many thousands of years, our mind is brought back to the time that the, the first ceremony was ever performed. It was performed by you, Father, in the Garden of Eden when you married our father and mother, Adam and Eve, and to this day, man has taken him a wife. Father, we pray that you will bless this young man and this young woman who has found love in their hearts one to the other, and in this reckless age that we are now living, so many divorces, breakups in homes, may it not be with this couple. May they remember this vow as long as they live. May there be no powers to ever separate them. I pray thee, Father, as you did bless Isaac and Rebekah and made them ever happy in their lives and they were fruitful, we pray that you do likewise to this young man and this young lady who have agreed upon this. They've talked it over and with each other in secret and now it has come. they have come to the church and in front of this company. They offer their troth, their loyalty, their faithfulness to one another and has did and declared it in this public place. Now, Father, by the power of my commission given me by Almighty God to be his servant in this sacred office, by this authority, I now pronounce this man and this woman, husband and wife, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. You are married. and You may kiss your bride. And whatsoever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. You see the me no one else sees, and I see the you you don't show. 
You read every page of my story, and I've read every chapter of your soul. And there's no way I found you on my own. Cause loving you's like breathing, don't you know? How are we ever strangers? Seems crazy to me now. Haven't I known you forever? Cause the thought of the day is without you and all your love have all but disappeared. I'll never be convinced, baby, that you weren't always here. How are we ever strangers? You're the first call I make when the sky falls. You're the hand that I'm holding when it's blue. You're the curtain closed when I need to hide out. You're the light when I need it shining through. There's always been something I'm running to. And there's never been a time it wasn't you. How are we ever strangers? Seems crazy to me now. Haven't I known you forever? Cause the thought of the day is without you and all your love have all but disappeared. I'll never be convinced, baby, that you are not always here. How will we ever stranger? All I know is I've always known you Ain't no way there was life before you All I know is I've always known you And there's no way I found you on my own Cause loving you's like breathing Don't you know how are we ever strangers Seems crazy to me now Haven't I known you forever Cause the thought of the day is without You and all your love Have all but disappeared I'll never be convinced, baby That you weren't always here How will we ever stranger? How are we ever strangers? How are we ever strangers? Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, damas y caballeros, may I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Julian Thomas Hill.
You're all invited to go next door to Taps Fellowship Hall for the reception. We thank you all for coming today. God bless you.